wanted to try to do, and most of you will find this fairly comfortable because you do it anyway, right? but I want you to think about it, okay? is that if you get a forehand, you're going to play straight rather than cross. So if you get a forehand, I want you to load up with the right foot behind the ball. If you get a backhand, I want you to load up with the left foot behind the ball. Okay, so the order is as such. Ready, split, then we've got to move in whichever direction, okay? And then we're gonna go hands, shoulders, then the racket. And look, I'm loaded up here on my right foot. I'm behind the ball. Okay, same on the backhand side. Not great, because I know you're on the wrong side. So there's the split. Then as I start to see the direction of the ball coming, Shoulders first, then I might need to move, and I get myself to here, and my left foot's behind the ball. Let's have a quick look at it in action. No pressure, Rob. No, no, get no, it right every time for me, please. Okay, so he's quite in line. Oh, okay, interesting. Okay, let's have another one. Let's have a look at the right foot, Moby. Okay, that one he closed off a little bit more. Right foot, good. way you so you can see as well. Right? So imagine I'm playing that way. Okay? Now on the forehand you're more likely to see that and then to play from there. And the reason for that is that my hand is behind the racket. Right? Pushing from here or driving from here is always stronger than doing it from above. Okay? With my backhand my hand's not on top. I can get extra drive from having another hand which is behind. But if ever you want to push something you do it from behind and you push away from it. Okay? So the forehand is always stronger because I'm going from behind it and out. With the backhand, it's that little bit weaker on the single hander potentially because my hand is more on top. And that action, the way my shoulders feel, is not quite as strong. I can't use my elbow in the same way. Again, level four stuff. So this is less of a multi segment shot. Whereas here, I've got the shoulder, I've got the elbow, I've got all of these acting as different units, which all combine to give it a lot more. That's why forehands tend to be bigger than backhands. If you hear about good players having a weapon, generally it tends to be the forehand rather than the backhand. Okay? And on average, you'll see that forehands are usually hit at about 10 miles an hour faster average speed than backhands. Okay? And that's why players will run around the backhand to hit the forehand. Okay? Whereas with the backhand, it tends to be more straight because I'm coming from a position more on top of the racket. So you'll see here that the left foot gets behind, but I realise then that I might not quite be able to get enough poke on it, so I might want to transfer my weight a bit more, so I'll go here and then boom. And what I've done then is I've transferred my weight forwards. Because I know that playing from here doesn't quite give me the same acceleration as it does with the forehand. So I tend to be able to play my forehand slightly more open. And my backhand, I'll go from here. I might not have the time to step in or step across, and I might have to play it from here. And playing semi-open stance backhands is not unusual at all. But if I have time and choice, if you watch guys like Murray, Djokovic, whatever, they'll go boom, Boom. A lot of the time. The only time would be if they have to punch a fast ball, okay, or if they have to play a deep ball, or if they're out wide here and they have to go from here. And they'll play from the left foot. If they have any time or any choice, they'll go boom, boom. And you saw that him with Ross. One of the times when I put Ross Stockley in the same sentence as Andy Murray. And <laughs> <laughs> 
That's good? You can live with that? Yeah. Okay, so please have a go at 50% pace. And the goal here is to line up the outside foot, load up with the outside foot behind the ball, forehand and backhand. 